You don't know how good it is until you need it. Roadside assistance. There's lots of options out there, and we talk about the ins and outs of all the top favorite programs for RVers, plus a whole lot more on this episode of the RV Miles Podcast. RV Miles is brought to you by L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean is a proud partner of the National Park Foundation, and you can help them support the parks by shopping their limited edition National Park Collection. Every time you purchase products from the National Park Collection, which includes totes, shirts, hats, patches, and more, you're helping to protect, restore, and improve parks throughout the U.S. Search National Park Collection at LLBean.com and be an outsider with L.L. Bean. Welcome to episode 177 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. We're coming to you from Waco, Texas, where we are uh, in the midst of a snowstorm six to eight inches worth today. <laughs> Go to Texas, they said. It'll be warmer, they said. It's a, it's, <laughs> and it's a wet, heavy snow. We were gonna record, we we're gonna, we're gonna deal with it, record outside yeah. in, in our roaming podcast studio, our clam tent. Uh, but the, the snow is actually so loud hitting the roof of the tent that we couldn't. That's how heavy and wet it is. We thought it would be so winter (laughs) idyllic. We'd have like the snow behind us. We'd open up one of the windows in the clam. We'd have the snow falling behind us. So instead, you get the snow falling behind us while we sit at our dinette here inside Ranger Gandalf Traley the second. That, of course, is if you are watching on YouTube, as most of you are listening and could care less what the scenery around us looks like. But if you want (laughs) to see what it's like to visit Waco in January... Pop over to YouTube and take (laughs) just a tiny little peek at what's going on outside our window. We also have had 70 to 80 degree days as well. And we're going to be getting back to that. we have not. We have had 70s. We have not had an 80 degree day. No, 70 to 80, like in the 70s. The warmest it's been here is like 65. But you run on an, you run (laughs) on you're it's so going cute. to get to the, 70 later this week. That is such a Chicago thing to do, what you just did there, <laughs> because it's been so cold for weeks that when it cracks like above yeah. 55, Chicago people be like, where are my Birkenstocks? <laughs> where are my Tommy Bahamas? I got to get outside. <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly what we did when we got here. Well, we got a lot to get to today. We're going to talk a lot about roadside assistance. We've had we've we've had more experience than we'd like to have had with roadside assistance in the past. Uh, so we've got some things to tell you about and some uh, interesting developments from some friends in the RV Miles Facebook group. But uh, I wanted to start today by giving you a heads up about a special episode we have coming up. Normally, we put these things out sort of regularly on the don't, weekends don't. <laughs> and we missed an episode <laughs> over the, the Christmas break. Um, but we're going to be releasing a special midweek episode this week on January 13th on Wednesday. And it's going to be an exclusive preview of the Arcadia fifth wheel, the new Arcadia fifth wheels coming from Keystone RVs. I interview their president and CEO about this new ground up redesign of fifth wheels. It's not crazy, wildly different looking on the outside. Uh, They released a a teaser video of it. And this is how this all came about. They released a a teaser video of it. And I did sort of a reaction video of that (laughs) on, on YouTube and they contacted me and uh, we set up this thing where we get to do this preview. They're going to be showing this new fifth wheel concept, uh, which is in production at the Tampa RV show coming up on Wednesday. And I, I'm, I'm one of the first people that has actually seen it and has the details now, which is so awesome. You are like a kid in a candy shop (laughs) right now. The joy on your face 
<laughs> it's really, it's really actually quite adorable and delightful that a fifth wheel reboot, uh, reimagining can just bring so much joy to your life. <laughs> like, I, so. I, I, I don't know what, I, I can't say anything on right now about it, but what I will say is it's not going to blow your mind. Like it looks like some sort of space age, different thing, but really what it's going to all be about is a, a better product with less issues that is better for boondocking. That's all I'll say. Ooh. So look for that on Wednesday on both YouTube and on uh, the podcast feed. Also wanted to talk a little bit. I've, I talked to, uh, I've been talking to a lot of different people in the industry over the last couple of weeks about the return from the pandemic. This is an interesting time right now because, you know, as we talked about, I think on, on the la one of the last couple episodes is this backlog of RVs that has happened over the course of 2020 is not just about the fact that a lot of people are wanting to buy them, but more it's about the fact that the suppliers are behind and the companies can't build them as quickly as they would like to. So there's a lot of talk about not buying one that was built in 2020 because they're, they're just cranking them out. And that's actually not been the case because they're waiting on parts. But I've, I've been talking to people about where they are in returning, you know, to, to normal. There, there was a lot of talk about how long it might take to get a newly ordered RV. And what I'm hearing right now is that they're, they're getting back, that all, there are a lot of new deliveries getting out on dealer lots right now, more coming. And if you were to order a new unit right now, if you were, order, if you were to order a new trailer, you'd probably be in about the three month zone to get a new trailer, which is, you know, that feels about right to me. Right. I mean, um, some, sometimes they can go a little bit faster during normal years, but you're still going to wait a long time for some specialty products like class B motorhomes, class B motorhomes take a while to build. And, um, they, they're, they're all the rage. Van life is all the rage, right? But they actually don't sell that many class B motorhomes in the industry. It's usually less than a thousand a year total industry wide. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Does it bother you, though, that it takes three months to get something as big as a trailer? Because it doesn't bother me. No. Like if I no. ordered something and they said, well, it's going to take us three months yeah. before we can get it to you. I actually wouldn't be bothered by that. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to equate that it means they're just taking their time to get it done. Maybe that means it's going to be better quality once I get it. But if someone said to me, oh, you just ordered a 42 foot, 16,000 pound fifth wheel, we'll have it to you custom built in two weeks oh i'd be like no i'm gonna yeah please take your now, time now part of it is <laughs> that it, it only spends like three days in the actual plant <laughs> being built Well, maybe it needs to start spending six <laughs> maybe but, if it spent six days they could get all the water lines tight i'm just the, saying the plant is all about assembly and obviously other stuff is happening before it all comes together i, I, I also want to say that I, the rv industry has been really plagued all, all the way since back uh, around the 2008, 2009 era, when the stock market crashed, um, they started building things cheaper. Uh, they started cutting corners in order to still get these units out and still be feasible businesses. And we saw a lot of these companies gobbled up back then. So there was a big reduction in, in quality at that time. And it has continued. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't want to give the industry a, a, a pass on this, but I will say we have all become more discerning buyers, I think, uh, even just in the last couple of years. I think due to the surge, due to the, the amount of social media, uh, due to the amount of YouTube channels and all that, there, there is been a focus on consumers about this quality issue. And you have people saying, I'm never buying an RV from any manufacturer because they're all terrible and they all have issues. So uh, what I'm getting at here is that the industry is seeing that. And there are lots of different manufacturers that are putting a new focus on quality. Now, I'm not saying that, <laughs> I'm not saying that everything's gonna get better all of a sudden, but, but consumer behavior drives this, right? So if consumers are willing 
to buy whatever comes out. They're going to put whatever comes out. But as consumers are more discerning, as we learn more about how RVs are built, as, as we know more about things to look out for during construction, as long as we have more people doing independent inspections for us, the manufacturers are getting wise to that. And they know there is a different level of customer, a customer that is experienced and is looking for that stuff. That's part of what this Arcadia fifth wheel is all about. But I, I've I've just been hearing about a lot of lots about more quality control testing and and, uh, and that sort of stuff at the plant and not at the dealership. I think you hit on it perfectly when you dropped the two words social media, yeah. because what is happening between 2008 and now here we are in 2021. Everyone has an Instagram. Most of us have a YouTube. Everybody has a Facebook, things of that nature, which allow us to voice our opinion and at the same time, tag the manufacturer, tag the product. Now, whether or not they respond to us doesn't mean they haven't seen it. And I think also with the influx of more people full-timing, more people RVing, they're using their rig more every single year. So these problems, these questions, these suggestions, they pop up more. They share pictures of them. They write reviews about them. The consumer has really learned, and not just at the like A-game consumer who knows how to use social media as a tool. Every consumer knows how to use social media in one way or another, and they've gotten really smart. It's not an email or a call to customer service anymore. Those days are gone. It's blasting them it's, on social it's media. It's literally but... <laughs> attempting to cancel Tiffin <laughs> for allowing Thor to purchase them. Well, you'll see That's it, what's happening. Somebody, if somebody has an, a, a major issue with the seventy thousand dollar RV they bought or more, you you'll see some of them on some of the manufacturers' Facebook pages. On every single post that manufacturer puts out, they'll they'll comment on it and say, don't ever buy this product. Yeah. So now <laughs> I also think that's created a culture where we don't take responsibility yeah. for our own actions within that purchase. Now, we went into the purchase of our current RV with our eyes wide open, knowing that we were going to have issues with it. We could sit here and blast Heartland all day long for the frustrations we've had with this trailer. But we also knew what we were getting going into it. Yeah, and we also knew it wasn't really intended for full time use, and that we're Absolutely. a little bit handy I mean, and could deal with stuff. That's the thing too is that like I think often if you're a full timer, wherever your budget lies, and then budget controls a lot of this, and I think that's somewhat frustrating to me that like just because my budget isn't six figures means I get less quality. That's frustrating. But if you if if two manufacturers are making two products with the same things that you want and one is making it cheaper and they look the same, even though they might not have been built as well, most consumers are going with the cheaper one. And yes. that's why it it is all, it really Dollars is driven talk. by us. Yeah. I mean, money talks. And I think we've all learned in this pandemic and the way we see unemployment continue to climb in this country that money is never a sure thing. You know, and we have to do what we have to do in order to protect and care for those that we have responsibility for. So if I'm purchasing something on a luxury, this is, you know, a, a bonus to being able to take vacations. I probably am going, personally speaking, set my budget lower than I normally would pre-pandemic. So I, there's so many things at play. And I will say, and we've talked about this a lot just, you know, on day to day, that I do think for the first time in the four years we've been doing this, that I actually feel like manufacturers are listening. Mm -hmm. They've finally gotten the message that it does not matter how cool the interior looks. It doesn't matter how Joanna Gaines, they try to make that inside farm, modern farmhouse, white and black, or what new design they come on the outside. As long as the quality and as long, like this is always going to hang over their heads. Well, this idea that RVs are poorly constructed. All that to say, we are seriously shopping for a new RV <laughs> <We> right now. <laughs> yep. And as we look at them, uh, every time we sit down to look, I'm floored that we make that same mistake of all we're paying attention to is floor plan. That's, uh, yes. I mean, that is the number one thing. And there is so much more, obviously, that goes 
yeah. into it. And who knows? And you know what? We're at the <laughs> point now where I, probably by the end of summer, things are going to look a little bit different around here for us. Probably a little bit bigger, which is weird. Very weird to think about, but also very exciting. Yeah. It's a, it's a new step for us. And it's another way, you know, for our kids who are growing. Jack is almost as tall as I am, mm-hmm. which is crazy. So, you know, that's something if we want to continue with this life that we love, we have to start reevaluating space, which is why we look at floor. Like, that's yeah. why layout has been such a it's, big it's conversation. Important. It is important. Growing boys. Yeah. You know, it's like I blink and they're another year older. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have the answer to last week's brain teaser. And we're going to talk about what happens when you do have those problems with your RV and call your roadside assistance. Let's take an extended break, too, because it's about to be kickoff for the Bears game. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. All right. That might not age well, depending on what happens. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know FMCA is the world's largest nonprofit RV club? And it's not just for motorhomes anymore. Travel with peace of mind knowing FMCA has your back and is protecting your family from roadside mishaps, saving you money, providing RV education, and more. You can save with members only deals on discounts like Roadside Rescue or FMCA RV Insurance. Get your tires ready for spring and summer trips. It's one of the most popular benefits of being an FMCA member. Members can save literally hundreds per tire. You can purchase Michelin, Continental, and hand-cooked tires for passenger vehicles, light trucks, and RVs. You can even use it in an emergency situation. FMCA membership is $85 for your first year, $75 upon renewal. And with the code RVMILES21, you can save $10 instantly and join for just $75 for your first year. View the full details of the tire discount and all the FMCA benefits at FMCA.com or call 800-543-3622 or click on the ad on the RVMiles.com website. Make sure to use that code RVMILES21 for $10 off FMCA membership. We are back with the answer to last week's brain teaser, which was clearly picked by Abby. (laughs) What makes you say that? Because it's short, sweet, to the point. And doesn't require you to do math. I think those are perfect brain teasers. When was it that Christmas and New Year were celebrated in the same year? And the answer, of course, is every year. Which Which is, look, (laughs) we got some really, really interesting answers to this question. And I could tell immediately that it was one of those that had lots of different options. So that was kind of fun to read. See, I I even created something that really got people to think outside the box. Yes, our our friend Howard, who has been answering brain teasers since we started doing them. He answers them at like 4.30 in the morning too, which I just, if I had his morning motivation, can you imagine how much I could get done before the kids wake up? I I don't know if it's that time when where he is, but. I think he's on the East Coast, so it's 5.30. Yeah. But he took it a step further (laughs) and told us the first year that Christmas and New Year's Eve were celebrated together. Learned something new. (laughs) All right. Um, We'll have a new brain teaser (laughs) that that I promise will be a little bit harder, maybe too much harder. uh, You know what? Sometimes the the most simplest (laughs) brain teasers are the biggest brain benders. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, because they think, oh, there's no way it could possibly be that simple. And then they're all they're all listening now and they're like, oh, oh that's what I thought. OK, you have something to read and I'm going to stare <laughs> okay. at the television while you do it. Our friend, uh, <laughs> our friend Deanna over in the RV Miles Facebook group posted um, the following. I've seen some recent posts asking about which roadside assistance to choose. I just wanted to let folks know that triple A will not change the inside tire of a dually truck despite their benefits guide seeming to indicate that it could be done with a plus RV rider, which we carry. The language pointed out to me was a statement that unloaded dually pickups get all services except tire service. However, and as I pointed out to them, under what is not included in their service is this statement, tire service for dual rear trucks or vans except under the plus RV rider. So it looks to me like I should have been covered, but the AAA dispatcher insinuated that the statement they quoted overruled that, and they refused to send someone to change the tire. Deanna then went and called their backup roadside assistance because they carry two, and they came right out and 
and change the dual tire. There were some comments and somebody said in the comments that uh, AAA did change their dual rear tire. And, you know, there. So it was a case of getting the wrong customer service rep. Well, maybe who, he, he, or here's, not. Here's the issue with AAA. AAA is a, a collection of motor clubs. There are regional motor clubs in different areas in the country. So if you go to their website and you want to sign up for AAA membership, get their roadside assistance, it's going to ask you your zip code so that they can direct you to the proper motor club. They, you know, they present themselves as one organization. But if you if you go through this process, you'll realize that the rules are slightly different between the different motor clubs and depending on what region you're in. So even if you got, you know, what coverage you thought you had in your region, when you're out of that region, sometimes you get in a situation where you have to pay for their service and get reimbursed, um, all sorts of different stuff. Plus it's absolutely impossible if you go to AAA's website to figure out what the heck it costs okay. to be a AAA member. I have a headache. <laughs> Just so you know, like you've been talking for 35 yeah. seconds and I have a headache. <laughs> so this is these confusing things. Um, I hear about different versions of what Deanna mentioned, not just dually tires, but obviously a lot of motorhomes have dually tires. Um, different versions of that story about different things about from AAA customers all the time. Now they're the biggest, of course. So they're going to have the most issues but are they the camping world of <laughs> roadside assistance <laughs> well camping world has roadside assistance we'll they get do. that to a, that yes, in a minute they do. <laughs> but I, i'm not a fan I, i've never been a triple a member um but i personally would avoid it just for all of those different confusing reasons and for the fact that they're yes they are a nationwide network of roadside assistance that's kind of what they do but their focus is not RVs. Their focus is cars, and and that's what they do. Um, so I, I I prefer something more RV specific, and I might pay a little bit more for that. So before we get into these other options, I just want to take a second to talk about how roadside assistance works. The companies that AAA or anybody else calls to come actually give you a tow or change your tire or whatever it might be, change a belt. They don't work for AAA uh, or, or the other companies. They are, they're called by them. They may have an, they have, may have an agreement of some sort, but not always, but they're going to be called by a dispatcher. And that dispatcher is going to say, will you go get this person for $35? And, uh, oh, by the way, it's a, it's a 17,000 pound motorhome. And you're going to need a heavy record to do it. We'll give you gas money. <laughs> uh, and in that, that service provider, they might be a negotiation, but if that, if that service provider does not want to do it, uh, they may call somebody else. But mm -hmm. I often hear people say, well, you know, AAA or good Sam couldn't find somebody to come tow me. They, they just called me back and they mm -hmm. said they couldn't find somebody. That's yes, tough. they could. They couldn't find somebody that would accept the amount that they yeah. were willing to pay. That's what it comes down to. So then, then you go through the process, you find somebody, and then generally they have to re you, you pay for it and they have to reimburse you, but they're counting on the fact that you won't do that uh, or that you will forget to get reimbursed or whatever it might be, or that they, they can fight the reimbursement. So it's not there's, cool. there's some shadiness that, that goes on and it's always, you know, companies like this, the roadside assistance is a very, very profitable business because you're giving them money and they're counting on the fact that you'll never need their service. Right. And some of them will kick you off after you use it two or three times in a year. I'm so, surprised we didn't get kicked off when we had Wonderbus. We well, that's because, you know, I, that company that we'll get to in a minute, I think, yeah. uh, is one that wouldn't do that. So, yeah, they're so, good people. So AAA is one option. Uh, and another option is Good Sam. Good Sam is owned by Camping World Holdings. Uh, the Good Sam organization, and a lot of people talk about, it, I'm, I'm a Good Sam member, is it, or is it worthwhile to become a Good Sam member? Good Sam membership is just 
a, a discount at Camping World and a discount at uh, some campgrounds across the country and a discount at Flying J Pilot gas stations. Uh, it's a car. It's a discount car that's like $40 a year. You have to buy the roadside assistance on top of that. So uh, so AAA's ends up being a, about $175 a year for the premier RV towing, which is sort of the high end. And now, obviously, if you have a smaller RV, if you have a Class B or something, you, you don't need the highest plans in some of these, plus $89 for additional household driver. Good Sam is only $89.95 a year. So Good Sam is kind of the budget one, right? And I've had, I've heard people have decent success with Good Sam. Good Sam will tow you to the nearest qualified service center. They're going to choose that service center for you. Whereas AAA is going to give you like up to 200 miles and you can go wherever. So say you're 200 miles from home, they can tow your RV back to your house, which is nice. Uh, but say you're 600 miles from the nearest qualified service center to deal with what you got to deal with, they're not going to deal with that, right? Or you're 400 miles or whatever, and you're going to have to pay that mileage fee, which can get really, really high. So I think it is, it is, uh, it's an important consideration, but generally each of these will do one or the other. Most of them, it's the nearest qualified service center. And the reason they're going to choose the service center, they're going to let you get, put a little input into it. Right. But they want to, they want to know for sure that they're not going to have to tell you again. So mm -hmm. say you're having an issue moving your RV, you know, you put it into gear, you've got a big diesel pusher, you put it into gear and it's not going anywhere. Well, that could be a, a stuck brake caliper uh, or it could be a transmission. Hmm. They're going to tell you, right. They're going <laughs> to, I'm saying this exact, I'm, this exact incident from experience, right? I just, look, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm triggered right now. Jay said, this is a tough conversation. They're going to oh. tell you to a shop that deals with transmissions so that they don't have to tell you again to another shop that doesn't. Um, so good Sam is an option. And if you're not somebody that RVs a ton uh, and you don't have a giant rig, maybe it might be the right option for you because it's a little bit more on the affordable side because it's, as they get higher in price, sometimes it's kind of like, well, you might as well just pocket that money and, and mm -hmm. use it if you need it. Mm -hmm. um, Good Sam is also going to be a little bit more RV centric. So they're going to cover paying for a mobile mechanic to come out to you where AAA will not pay for a mobile mechanic. So if you want an RV, and, and I'm talking about like an RV technician, somebody to come fix your furnace, Good Sam Roadside Assistance is going to pay that, that person's fee to get to you. They're not going to pay the hourly fee, but they're going to pay that person's fee to come out to you, the service call fee, whereas AAA would not do that. And just like all the other roadside assistance, Good Sam is going to cover fuel delivery, lockout service, tire change, battery boost, um, and that that sort of stuff. And they're they're also going to cover your issues with your other vehicles. So you don't have to have an RV roadside assistance plus a roadside assistance for your cars. You can just have the one program with most of these. So Good Sam is a, is a decent option. Um, but the two options that we want to point you to that we recommend, especially if you have a big RV or that you are a, a, a heavy RVer, that you RV a lot and you travel long distances. And um, we should say before that we've had both of these. Yes. And that we are absolutely not being paid right. to talk about the two of these. These are two that we have used ourselves in the past to, and we have used them. Yes. So we can talk about whether or not they're actually going to take care of you in some pretty stressful situations, because I wanted to just say this really quick before we move into that. The thing about Deanna's comment, the thing about comments in general that I find really stressful about roadside assistance is that there are so many hidden rules and situations like what she ran into when you are in the middle of an incredibly stressful situation. Yes, it is not... It is a tough time to figure out you right. don't like your roadside assistance. Well, and there is nothing worse. And I just, I think it's really kind of icky that a roadside assistance would know you are stranded on the side of the road and then they're going to call you back 
and be like, oh, we couldn't find anyone because we own, you know, they're not going to say this. We only want to pay X amount of dollars, but because they will only pay X amount of dollars, they're leaving you stranded yeah. on the side of the road or, or wherever you are. I mean, that to me, that, mm, that I just, that really gets me. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on into two brands that we uh, have some experience with. Yeah. So the first one being CoachNet. It's coach, C-O-A-C-H dash net dot com, N-E-T. And coach net was sort of born out of serving like tour buses and, you know, big traveling uh, commercial motor coaches. And um, they are solely focused on this. Like this is, this is what they do. And we had fantastic experiences with them when we had issues with our bus conversion. Oh my goodness. Yes. And, um, what really makes the difference, because like I said, this is all about th these service providers don't work for these co companies. What really makes the difference is the call center and the dispatcher mm -hmm. and what they're willing to do and how hard they work for you. CoachNet will get somebody to you. They will call you back several times to make sure that person has arrived, that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They will pay that service provider over the phone with a credit card if need be. They, uh, they once towed us on a Sunday to a, a service center that was closed on Sundays. And they then towed us again Monday morning. They sent a truck out just to tow our bus from that service center's yard into the service bay at no charge to us. Fantastic service. And we were always very, very, very happy with them. And they towed us a decent way on yeah. that one too, mm -hmm. because we were going from my parents' house yeah, all the way, I think about 30 or 40 miles, Cover, maybe even 50. Covers everybody in your family and uh, in all the vehicles in, in your family, covers uh, all the other stuff like sending fuel out, uh, sending uh, you know, the, the, the other thing I've heard from other RVers too, that, that because when you call them, they know RVs and the person that you talk to is, is going to be a dispatcher. That's going to help figure out what type of towing company that needs to be called, depending on the size of, of your rig. I, uh, I know Chris and Cherie over at, uh, uh, Technomadia and the mobile internet resource center. They posted a video several years ago with, uh, about their bus conversion which was an old two stroke engine and, and could not be uh, towed on the ground that, that CoachNet actually sent out a, a low drop flatbed trailer wow. to put their entire bus on for them. So it's that kind of attention to detail. And there are technicians that you can talk to at CoachNet to help you solve a problem that might even keep you from having to have somebody come out to you. Now, the flip side to that in regards to, if we're just looking at, good Sam is that you are going to pay for this. Right. So, and uh, you know, I think you have to put yeah. that into perspective yeah. too. You know, uh, sometimes I think if you have a class, a class, if you have something with an engine, this, I would not hesitate. I would drop the money to have something like coach net. I might rethink it. If I have a trailer that does not have an engine, I, I could probably yeah. do a little bit more comparison. Now, they do give you a, a discount if you are a, a towable owner. Yeah, I see so that on it, there. It is, it is $250 a year for a, a motorized RV, whether you're, whether you're one of the biggest 45-foot motor coaches or a small Class B it's going to be $250. You a got year. an engine, it's going to be $250. If you are a towable, it is going to be $179 a year. And that puts it more on par with AAA Premier Plus. Um, if you, you know, but that, that, I actually think that's a fantastic deal if you're a Absolutely. big fifth wheel because they're going to deal with the problem with your truck if you have a problem with your truck and get your trailer somewhere for you safely, which is always very nice. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, they'll tow your trailer into the campground. While they tow your truck to a service center, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. It's peace of mind. It really is. Now, the other program that you might want to consider is very, very similar to, to CoachNet. Now, we haven't had, we have had this service, but we haven't had to use it as much. 
And that's FMCA's service, mm -hmm. the, the Family Motor Coach Association. FMCA, you have to be a member of S FMCA, first of all. So that's, Yeah, so you're going to have that additional cost, yeah. which is $75 a year. I think it's $85. We have a $10 off discount code, $75 for the year. But you're going to have to add that into what you're paying, you know, if you get their roadside assistance, that's an additional cost. But you get all the other benefits yes. of being FMCA members. You get the the Family RVing Magazine. You get their tire discount. Which, speaking of the Family RV Magazine, RVing oh. Magazine, if I can just get out the little horn here for a minute. If you join or you are joined, just, just look through February's upcoming magazine. You might recognize a little... A little somebody in there, <laughs> just saying. They have a couple great uh, internet discount programs and, and a lot of stuff that is really worthwhile. I actually think the most important thing, the best thing about being an FMCA member is their uh, emergency evacuation service, which is free included with your membership, which will get you back home if you have a medical emergency or something like that, or you know, pay for a medevac flight, that kind of stuff. Anyway. And we have also been there, done that, <laughs> right. at least in regards to starting the process and the paperwork. Exceptional. They wasted no time. We ended up not needing to use it. But oh my goodness, what peace of mind that was, even knowing that was an option. Now, I uh, uh, FMCA's service is very similar to CoachNets. They offer a lot of the same stuff. Um, it is available to U.S. and Canadian residents. Uh, it is towing to the nearest qualified repair facility, no matter how far away it is. Uh, it is fuel delivery, lockout, tire change, battery, all that sort of stuff. And they do have uh, tech assistance over the phone when you call. FMCA's program, in addition to that $75 a year membership, is going to be $129 for towables and $159 for motorized RV. So about the you know your end cost, is going to be similar to CoachNet, but mm -hmm. you're going to get the extra benefits of being an FMCA member. And FMCA is a big nonprofit organization, which I think is worthwhile to support. Yeah. Anyway. And now I have to go back to this because this is just who I am. I feel like I tooted my horn and now I feel so silly for it because I'm not one who likes to push things I do like that in that kind of way. And my face is so red for even saying anything. But for me, like seeing something in print that I wrote is so <laughs> are you, thrilling. Are you embarrassed that you wrote a little article? I'm a little embarrassed You've got 20,000 podcast listeners listening to you no, right now and you're a little embarrassed a about little, your little article. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed that I, that I needed to completely interrupt this conversation <sighs> and be like, and now for a moment about me. I feel very embarrassed about that, but it feels very much when I see something that I wrote in print, like you can it, touch it like in a magazine is like when I would get the playbill for a show. And I, the first thing I always wanted to do was open it up and then you'd see your headshot and your bio. And that was just so thrilling to see something like that. And then I would just sit backstage and, you know, read everyone's <laughs> bios and see their headshots. But, you know, that's how this, that's what I equate like writing in the RV world, I equate it to a playbill in theater with your headshot. And okay. So anyway, I just I had to get that off my chest. I had to get that off my chest because I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. I just <laughs> just did that. <laughs> All right. That's our thoughts on roadside assistance. And yes. I'm not, I, I want to say I'm not saying, you know, if you have AAA and you've liked it and it's worked out well for you. Great. I just if that's the route you're going, make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Make sure you know what you have is covered where you want to go. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have our fresh tank, black tank segment. And uh, we're going to wrap this up with a brain teaser. And the Bears game is only a little sad right now. We're yeah. only losing by seven. Yeah, that's when it comes to RV travel, weather safety is a top priority, which is why the Highway Weather app provides weather forecasts for road trips along every point of your route, adjusted to your time of travel. You can compare forecasts, get recommendations for the best time to head out, get severe weather alerts, add rest stops to long trips, and more. Did I mention all of that is included free in the app? For subscribers, there's a hands-free background feature to automatically alert you to upcoming bad weather. 
To download the app, visit highwayweather.io today or look for it in your iOS or Android app store. It is now time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? So my black tank goes to the roads of Texas, but they're kind of not the like it's sort of like not their fault. For whatever reason, Apple, Google and Garmin are losing their minds ever since we got near Dallas. We can't get on a road that's the actual road we're on. The GPS doesn't know where we're at. And also, maybe someone knows the answer to this. Why are the interchanges so high up? Why do I have to feel when I'm on the interstate like I am going up at the start of a roller coaster ride <laughs> in order to mer- like change and get onto another highway? And I don't know if that's what's throwing the well, GPS off. I, I, like it thinks we're flying all of a sudden. I think but that's like... part of it in, in Dallas. I think there is it is a big spaghetti of interstates. It's crazy. There are all the tall buildings. And I forgive it for not understanding when you're on top of one and you're on top of the other and, and you've got the I, signal bouncing off of buildings. I get that. But now we're in Waco. In what, what's going on? The, it, none of our GPSs understand this, the minor city no. of Waco, Texas. One minute, the GPS is like, take a right. So I get into the right lane. And this is across the board. This is not happening with just one GPS. This is happening on all three of them that we use. And I get into the right. And then I'm like, I I take the right. And then it's like telling me to turn around. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You told me to go right. Why did you actually want me to go left? When we arrived here, our Garmin took us 12 miles oh away God. from our campground and said, you are here. <laughs> and and we're, we're like, no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. We're literally standing. <laughs> this like, is we're, a field. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, uh, we're actually supposed to be camping by the lake, <laughs> not this big giant cow pasture. So, I mean, it, the poor GPS here, I, you know, it's very interesting too, because especially with Garmin, because Texas is such an RV state, Mm -hmm. you know, and so to have such confusion in what is already kind of like a difficult state to drive in personally, I, you know, we've talked about this a little bit. Texas drivers can be very aggressive and they really don't like to let you into a lane. So when you are trying to be guided, because all you want to do is just go get a cupcake at Magnolia Bakery. And the GPS <laughs> literally <laughs> tries to take you 10 miles away from said cupcake. It's just very stressful. They might as well say not the GPS might as well not be able to find Disney World. I, it's yeah, the same thing. I, exactly. <laughs> I, that's exactly what it's like. Like can't find Disney, can't find Magnolia. Uh. What, what are you going to do? All right. What's in your fresh tank? So my fresh tank for when we finally did make it to um, the silos was um, I had my very first cup from the Magnolia Press, the coffee shop there. My very first cup ever of Texas pecan coffee or pecan. However you want to say it. Texas pecan, (laughs) Texas pecan. I say pecan. I think you say pecan. I could say pecan. Pecan. (laughs) No, I say pecan. Do you say pecan? Well, here's the difference. If no, here's pie, the thing. If it's pie, it's pecan. It's yeah. always pecan. No, no, no. Pie. If it's pie, it's pecan pie. Oh, well, see, to me, it's always pecan. It's pie. a pecan pie, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a pecan. See, I'm the opposite, exact yeah. opposite. When I have a pecan, it's very refined. Nice bowl of pecans there. But when I have pie, you just give me that pecan pie because that's what I'm gonna have. <laughs> but it's refined when I have Texas pecan <laughs> okay. coffee. So I had my first cup. It was so good. Like, so good. So now before we leave the state of Texas, I am going to need you to build me a space where I can put at least 20 pounds of coffee. Do they sell it at the Bucky's? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they sell it at Heb or H-E-B. H-E-B? Is that how we, I don't know. I don't know I'm going to get dinged for this. I don't know if it's H-E-B. Or Heb. And is H-E-B plus 
like a Costco or a Sam's Club because the GPS, I asked for a grocery store and it took me to an HEB plus and it had like a gas station and a really large Costco-esque parking lot that was packed. And I got really intimidated and I left and was like, take me somewhere else, please. So I'm wondering if that's like a membership only. Is, look, Texas people, anybody who knows the ins and outs of Heb, please tell me, can I go shop at the Plus? Because I was so intimidated. Uh, but I have been told that by several people that their Texas pecan coffee is the way to go. Okay. So that gets my fresh tank for this week. I can't wait to go get some for myself. Uh, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? Uh as I said, or as we talked about early on, we're shopping for RVs, right? And it, there are a lot of brands, right? Um, especially when you're looking at trailers. And a lot of brands that have very similar features, a lot of brands that have different model lines under them. And it's very hard to figure out what makes them different or unique from each other? Mm. And when you go on these manufacturers' websites, which are universally terrible, <laughs> I mean, please tell us how you really they feel. are. They're universally <laughs> terrible. Uh, it's very difficult to discern. Like, why am I looking at this brand over another one? Like, you can't. Mm. You can. Nobody is good at everything. Just, you know, accept the fact that your brand is not good at everything. What is the focus of this line? Is it? Is well, that's this a, why we have to go to YouTube. Right. I we mean, have to go to YouTube and, and find somebody to tell us that. We're doing what everybody else, I'm sure, does. Is sitting and just watching hours and hours Which, of RV reviews from Big Truck, Big RV. No, no, no. Shout out to Matt's. Oh, well, Matt's RV reviews. Yeah. Is the, Shout out is to that guy because Jason <laughs> clearly knows, knows Matt. Yeah. I had never watched any of his videos until today when Jason was like, you got to watch this. You didn't get to see the jump until today. He does I a jump at the I beginning. I never. Yeah. And his, his ability to that straight leg jump and how it's fantastic. it's fantastic. He creates such a beautiful X in the air. I was so impressed. So I, and he Shout does, out he did, to every Matt's time RV he says the MSRP, he does the dun, 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 <laughs> and he and he and he always checks out the the. I'm going to say this in a in a more diplomatic way than he does. The uh the position that you sit on oh, in the I, toilet that is brilliant. <laughs> he sits down and he gives you. But it's an important him. thing, right? It's very important. Listen, I am not one who uh likes to put a lot of stickers on things like uh, I think it's adorable and really cool. All the sticker clubs that are out there. And I love to see people exchanging them. It's not something we particularly do. I would put a Matt's sticker on this trailer, which is a just, picture of Matt. Yeah. It's legit. Like just a picture of him, <laughs> like, like a in a red polo. Yeah. But I would, I just wish I could get it in like the jump form. Well, I wish congratulate Matt too because he just crossed a hundred thousand subscribers, which is an, a fantastic achievement. Yes, and he's grown really, really fast. So I would be happy to give him four dollars for a sticker. <laughs> I'll put it on the cooler. <laughs> anyway, I go. just told you. Wow, that really so, side road. Anyway, the manufacturers start figuring out like what the heck your line is all about, and you know, say something about it. Come on, like I, I shouldn't have to click to open up a PDF brochure to read about the details of this line on a website. Put it on a web page. Okay, can I say though? I really don't think Saber needs to say anything because. They already just have the beauty of their name being Saber, <laughs> which immediately sends you into office mode and Sabre, which is like a universe. I mean, a, mo a lot of their videos have somebody that's just like Dunda Mifflin and Sabre. Like, that's all you need to this, know. This may be too deep of a cut. It for might some be people. too deep of a cut, but I'm just saying. <laughs> They why they already have built in like a connection to the office, which already just makes them cool. It just you don't need anything else. Save the PDF <laughs> link to the episode. <laughs> What's in your fresh tank? Uh, my fresh tank is our friend Susie over in the RV Miles Facebook group, friend of the show, Susie, who uh, posted in the Facebook group about a new new year's resolution 
which is picking up one bag of litter for each night of camping on U.S. public lands. Love it. Which, uh, in the res- her response uh, from the other members of the group was so fantastic. She was wondering if there was anybody, you know, any uh, sort of group that does that sort of thing. And the only thing I could think about was, I know um, Thor Industries and KOA partnered to create that uh, Pick Up America mm, initiative. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this last year when they did it. And you can go to their website, pickupamerica.com, and you can pledge to pick up a certain amount of trash. Oh, and is they, that they still going on? They put you on a map, and you've got a big map that, oh, you can, wow. that you get to be put on. And it's really cool. And they've, they've, wow, Midwesterners. They say they have picked up, uh, their, their goal was 50 tons when it came out, and they have picked up 490% of that, which is awesome. Did a mouse just go across that screen? A mouse did just go across oh, the screen on their see. website. No, you can't do that to me. <laughs> like that. Uh, so you can check that out. But Susie said she's also going to create a Facebook group for people that want to oh, kind of do the same thing. And I, you don't have to post on social media or anything about doing this, but I think it's a great idea mm-hmm. for us out there to pick up more than, you know, we leave behind. Uh, public lands are, are... Give more than you take. They're They're dealing with a lot of litter lately and i think it would be great if more of us spent the time to pick some more of it up so thank you Susie, for doing that and for encouraging some other people to do it as well yeah count us in okay let's wrap up with brain teaser okay so i'll just be over here taking a nap while you give your 45 minute brain teaser to the please, fine people uh, of please bring Max. out your scratch pad <laughs> your calculator is it time for a Mad Lib? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Three pieces of antique jewelry, a locket, a pin, and a ring, have ages whose sum is 310 years. The sum of two times the age of the locket five years ago and the age of the pin 10 years ago is 240 years. The difference between three times the locket's age in three years and two times the ring's age four years ago is zero. Find the ages of the locket, the pin, and the ring. We'll have the answer to that and a whole lot more on next week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, we will. And if you are enjoying the show, we would love a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts. As we've said many times before, it just helps put us in front of new listeners. And to the three people who recently left comments over on Apple Podcasts, those were such a joy to read. Thank you so much. It is so delightful for us to pop over there because you never know what you're going to get. So when you get something as joyful as those comments that we've been getting lately, they just make Jason and I, we kind of go, who? Unlike the person who is listening on double speed on the Apple podcast app and thinks we talk like chickmunks. Please slow it down. We're so, that just sounds miserable. I cannot (laughs) imagine. Not our fault. Sorry. I know, but you know what? Like that's a tough sell. Like anytime, (laughs) sometimes we'll be sitting in the truck and my watch, if we're playing something off my phone, my watch will accidentally trigger something and start to speed it up. And you are frantic, like trying to stop yeah. it. So anyway, uh, if you nice, want... Nice little humble brag about your Apple Watch there. Go ahead. Oh my gosh. Go if you would like to talk to Jason and I on social media, please find us over at the RV Miles Facebook group. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook as well. We hope you all are staying warm. We wish you again the very best as we continue into a very wacky 2021. But until then, be safe, wear your mask, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye.